Here's Rachel Maddow, uh, the evening that Trump uh, turned himself in on charges of boxes in his bathroom. He gave a speech at his Bedminster Club in New Jersey that night. And here's Rachel Maddow explaining why it is beneath MSNBC to broadcast lies coming from the mouth of <laughs> Donald MSNBC. Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Here you we can't go. Make it up. Can't make it up. Here we go. I need to say that former President Trump has just started uh, making public remarks, just as he did on the evening of his first arraignment on criminal charges. That was April when he was booked on 34 felony counts brought by the state of New York. Now, tonight, after his arraignment on federal felony charges, he's speaking again, this time to an audience of his supporters that's gathered for a, a campaign fundraiser tonight at his, his golf club and summer home in New Jersey. Um, we knew heading into this that he was planning to make these remarks. We are prepared for his pre-fundraiser remarks tonight to again be essentially a Trump campaign speech. Because of that, we do not intend to carry these remarks live. Um, as we have said before in these circumstances, there is a cost to us as a news organization to knowingly broadcast untrue things. We are... <laughs> There's a cost to us as a news organization to knowingly oh broadcast God. untrue oh things, right? That was, I, it, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, was it Pat Paulson who said Kissinger winning the Nobel Beast Prize made satire obsolete? Right. Like exactly, Rachel yeah. Maddow saying that on MSNBC makes satire obsolete. She is most known. What she will be remembered for, what she will go down in history for when the history books are written. She will be associated with the most flagrantly untrue story of the century, which was Russiagate. Like that it was almost three of years. Of the century so far. <laughs> so far. Almost three years of that. Brazenly untrue. We can't broadcast untrue things. There is a cost. The other point I want to make here, I mean, that's the obvious one, right? Just, the, well, there's a cost to us knowing I mean, that, we're broadcasting that, that's, untrue That's for things. the shit libs. I mean, the shit libs are the population of Oceania. I, you know, whatever you tell them they need to forget, they forget. They memory hole it. That's it. Forget about Russiagate. Uh, you know, I mean, that, that's who that's for. But and that, that, more... that's their audience. You can get away with that with that, with that audience. There's a more conceptual point here that I think is almost even more important than the obvious absurdity of what she just said, which is that a presidential candidate who has just been indicted making a campaign speech at this pivotal moment of the campaign, that itself is news. Even if he goes up there and says untrue things, what he's saying is right. the news right. because he's a candidate in hot water and this is a pivotal moment in his campaign. And the same people who took it upon themselves to be the safeguards of what? The norms and guardrails of democracy are now saying they cannot broadcast a presidential candidate's speech because the candidate might be lying. And because the candidate might be lying, his speech has no news value. I'm sorry, what adherence to what norms are you talking about? What, what norm are you upholding by refusing to cover the speech of a presidential candidate? Well, this is a this is a point that Taibbi really hones in on, that the news organizations after Trump got elected made a decision that they are the press in Nazi Germany and or pre Nazi Germany right before the Reich takes over. And so they have a moral obligation to throw out the standards of just cover the news. And his argument has been they sacrificed their credibility entirely in that decision. And they it, it, once you lose that, it's very hard to get it back. So in the in the course of making this choice, they are no longer in any way uh, respected. They lost the influence that they hoped to wield by straight out running a four-year assault on Donald Trump. They lost all moral authority by doing that. How can you regard it as news? I mean, MSNBC really wasn't news anyway. But the New York Times, the Washington Post, these things that were, you know, kind of, that's it. Like, uh, all you've got left are the shit libs. And that's a very small percentage of the population. Right. 
Exactly. All right, let's hear the, the rest of this. I'm not even sure if the rest of this is worth hearing, but let's try it anyway. It's been a while since I saw this. I saw this early in the morning. To bring you the news, it hurts our ability to do that if we live broadcast what we fully expect in advance to be a litany of lies and false accusations, no matter who says them. No, no, not no matter who says them. If the candidate for president says them, it's news that he says them. It's it's not news if you say them and you present them as news, which oddly enough you have done in the past, <laughs> right? But, but of course it matters who says them. You're covering the campaign. What the leading candidate for the Republican nomination says is news, whether it's true or not. Obviously, obviously. Well, and also this. Hang on one this second. is. I gotta clip this. I'm gonna take a screenshot because I like the look on her face. <laughs> oh, you gotta all, use all, that for the clip. All these pretenses at setting a moral standard or a journalistic standard, this is just a business tactic. By this time, they have to have realized that whenever they do this with Trump, they're throwing fuel on the fire. You're, you're just reinforcing people's perception that if you really want to get at this despised aristocracy, support Donald Trump. They have to have figured this out by now. So they don't really care about that. They care about appealing to the the five geriatrics that still watch this shit. And this is what they want to hear. Right. Indeed. And I do not say this with any glee. I hope it is clear that this is not a glib decision. We take our responsibilities seriously. We revisit decisions like this all the time. We no, what, 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 what's very, very clear is that this is hollow virtue signaling to your brain dead audience. Oh, they have such integrity <laughs> for not cutting to the speech. Even though they're going to probably be showing clips from the speech for the next week because that's all MSNBC does is Trump outrage porn. So it's not like that, they're never going to show the speech. It's they're not going to show it live because we right, don't, we can't right, predict yeah. what he's going to say, and we have to protect right. you. They'll from clip it. it. We'll clip, clip the it. speech, and we'll make money off the speech all week. But we're going to pretend right now that we are this virtuous organization who's not willing to expose our audience of Chardonnay and Xanax mixing moms uh, <laughs> to the lies, the dangerous lies of Donald Trump, who was found with cardboard boxes in his bathroom. <laughs> no, it's it's really like this kind of news. You know, Jimmy was talking about it, sitting at a table with people who are, you know, it just repeat what they hear on the New York Times. I just I just had it out with an old friend of mine about that because he was like, can you believe what Ron DeSantis said? I'm like, dude, like, do you have any opinions that you did not read on the New York Times op-ed page? It's it's just mind boggling that people would yeah like I, I can hear them in my head. You know, it, for, for me, it's it's the guy on the Upper West Side. It's, you know, Sidney Applebaum. <laughs> See, this is why I like Rachel, right. because she's honest and and she's not going to take this shit from Donald Trump. No, she's, she's gonna not going to platform him. What is she? She's, she's not going to take the him. bait. Right. She's not going to take the bait. She's not yeah, going to stoop exactly. to his level. Right. She, she, she's not going to give him a platform. Right. That's responsibility. That's responsible journalism. I saw somebody, say, you know, it's it's really it's like fucking it's like they're massaging people's brains. And I saw somebody talking about what a gentleman Chris Hayes is. Oh, he said, what the fuck are you talking about? What are you what are you talking about? These are all just paid propagandists. But that's if you sit in this soup all day. That's what it does to your brain. And it's just you you wind up uh, as, uh, just uh, brainwashed, a brainwashed zombie of it. Because all day long, all of these different news sources, they they all construct the same exact narrative. So you're getting it from all sides. You know, you ever confront one of these people and you'll say, yeah, you need to stop getting your news from MSNBC. And they'll say, I don't get my news from MSNBC. Oh, but you, you read the Times? Yeah. Well, it's the same shit. <laughs> it's the same. They all have the same storylines. Right, right. Now, I mean, Hayes is like, he is the nice guy of the network, right? His role is the benign propagandist. He, Chris right. Hayes is like the Bobby Bacala of MSNBC, right. you know, <laughs> the, the mobster who hasn't actually whacked anyone yet, right? Yeah. He's, a, he's a nice guy, right? Yeah. Nice what, guy. What, what's the, he yeah. still takes the money, right? Bobby was a big, you know, he, he, still, he still got paid off of the propaganda, but you know, he's, he's w one of the nicer ones. Uh, all right, here we go.
We make the best call that we can in real time, every time. But tonight, our call is this. We will monitor that speech by the newly indicted former president. We will not carry his remarks live. If he says anything newsworthy, we promise we will turn that right around and bring it back to you. We can't, we can't let his fastest followers hear what he's saying. In the meantime, we're going to the first round of auditions for next year's Puppy Bowl, everybody. We'll be broadcasting yeah. <laughs> that to our audience. That's more newsworthy than whatever Donald Trump is about to say. Yeah, I mean, what are they going to do? They're going to play this game for the whole election season? Like, what if he, what if I wind up having to eat shit and he becomes the nominee? Which, I mean, that's what really concerns me here, because I'm going to look pretty stupid if he becomes a nominee. I've been talking this DeSantis shit for a year. But Wayne, uh, that's my point. Yes, he was a he was a thug who eventually did kill somebody. But for the longest time, he didn't actually commit a murder himself. That's what that's the point. Bobby Bacal, he was the nice guy who still profited nice off guy, the criminal exactly. enterprise. That's what Chris Hayes is in MSNBC. He's a nice guy. I mean, he, he still gets paid. He still gets the blood money. But, you know, he doesn't get his hands dirty. Anyway, sorry. I, I didn't mean to cut you off. That's no, all right. I just couldn't let that go. Yeah. Sorry. Right. It's one thing to have my political knowledge impugned, but when someone questions my knowledge of the Sopranos, I have to defend myself immediately. Please clap. Yeah.